My name is Charlie, and I have a question to ask you. How much do you know about creepy pastas? To be more specific, how much do you know about the smiling dog? Unlike other creepy pastas, its author is anonymous, and nobody knows anything about its origin. From one day to the next, people just started seeing the picture of that strange dog smiling, and those who claimed to see the terrifying animal in their dreams were never seen on the internet again. I am one of those people who had contact with Smile Dog, and I don't know what made me survive that day. Maybe it was luck, maybe my life was spared, or maybe what I saw that night was messing with me. Whatever happened, the mere memory of what I experienced that night was worse than death, and for the first few months after that day, I would have preferred not to be alive to remember it. It all started one Sunday night. At that time, I was studying psychology, and the next day I had a difficult neurobiology exam. I spent the whole day studying, and when night came, I took a break and started reading horror stories on the internet. Among them, I found an image that caught my attention. It was the smile dog. I opened the image and began to look at it carefully. It didn't look photoshopped, and if it was, it was very well done. Something about this image made me feel very uncomfortable, but it was quite hypnotic. I got closer and closer to see it. It was as if I was hypnotized. Charlie, how many times have I told you that leaving hot water in the pot is not washing it out? Oh my God, what is that? <sighs> you scared me, Mom. <sighs> it's just a horror story from the internet. You shouldn't watch that stuff at this hour. You won't be able to concentrate. Don't worry, Mom. I was going to sleep anyway. I'll continue studying in the morning. Make sure you wash the pot when you get up. Yes, good night. And Mom, please knock next time. With some hesitation, I closed the window where the dog picture was, turned off the monitor, and went to sleep. Once I woke up, I realized that I overslept, so I changed as quickly as I could and rushed to the university. The exam was long and arduous. I must admit that I wasn't quite prepared, but maybe I had done well, although I wouldn't know that until the following week. I left the university and walked home, but when I was a few blocks away, something caught my attention. Behind me, about a block back, a dog was following me. I could tell he was following me because he stopped at the same time I did. Normally, this wouldn't catch my attention, but with the creepypasta I saw yesterday, I was a bit freaked out. I started to walk faster and faster, but the dog was going at the same speed as me. There was something strange in the way he walked. His steps were too exaggerated, as if instead of being a dog, he was imitating one. I ran the last block and arrived home safely. As I turned the key and prepared to go inside, I looked in the direction of the dog one last time. The dog was still a block away, but it was no longer sitting there waiting for me. The dog was standing on two legs. As it did so, its eyes were frozen on me. Despite being so far away, its gaze pierced that entire block and chilled my blood. I slammed the door shut and quickly locked it, feeling that it gave me a little more reassurance. I spent the afternoon as if I was in a trance. I wandered around the internet, playing online games and pretending that nothing had happened. When night came, I went to sleep without eating. My mother and sister assumed I was tired from the exam, so they didn't say anything. After several hours of sleep, I woke up in total darkness. Since my window overlooks the courtyard, there's usually some light coming into my room, but this time it wasn't the case. There must have been a power outage down the block. As I was waking up, I saw a black silhouette approaching me in the dark. I couldn't see clearly, but I knew that silhouette. That was Max, my dog. I watched as he walked towards me, but I felt something was wrong. What was the dog doing here? He always sleeps in the yard. I heard a bark coming from the backyard, confirming that my dog was there. So who was in my room? I turned around to the other side of my bed, expecting the worst. Being so close, I could make out the silhouette perfectly. It was my dog. My dog really was in my room. As soon as I saw it, I reached out to pet it and it licked my hand. Confused by the barking I had heard earlier, I turned my head back to my patio window. And what I saw left me paralyzed with fear. My dog was standing, 
leaning against the window, scratching at it to get into my room as it always does. This didn't make any sense. Three seconds ago, my dog was next to me, licking my hand. When I turned around, Smile Dog's dog was right next to me. It wasn't doing anything, just staring at me with a huge macabre grin that went from ear to ear. It might not have been doing anything to me, but its gaze, its two dark circular eyes gave me a horrible feeling of death. My heart was going faster and faster, and I was finding it harder and harder to breathe. The dog stood there, looking at me, trembling. I tried to move, to escape, to run, to do anything to get away from that situation, but nothing worked. I was totally paralyzed. Suddenly, I began to hear footsteps behind it. My room was darker than before. I couldn't see the silhouette of what was walking behind the dog, but they were human footsteps. When they were right behind the smile dog, the footsteps stopped. Out of the dark came a gray hand, which petted the dog. The hand was hairy and large, and the nails were long and black. Although it was too dark to see anything else from the hand, I could recognize huge glowing red eyes behind the dog. (laughs) It was all a nightmare, but it felt so real. When I was trying to figure out what I had dreamed, I raised my hand and felt my heart skip a beat. My hand was soaked with dog saliva. The monitor turned on by itself and on it was the picture of Smile Dog. Underneath it, the picture said, share the picture with all your friends and God bless you. My only reaction was to cry and obey. I sent the photo to everyone I knew. Some responded confused, others thought it was a joke. The important thing is that it worked, because that was the last time I dreamed about the dog. I still can't find an explanation for what I experienced that night. The only thing I can tell you is that be careful with the things that you look for. In the beginning, we all thought it's a joke, but since this happened to me, it can happen to anyone. And I don't know if everyone will be as lucky as I was. I discounted the smile dog when I first heard about it. I considered it another urban legend, but that was before I met Alex, before I realized the true horror hidden behind those smiling, malevolent eyes, and before I understood how a simple image on a computer screen could cause such terror. On a calm Friday night, everything started. When my friend Alex called, I was at home looking up information online. He begged me to come over right away, sounding frantic and trembling in his voice. I snatched up my jacket out of concern and headed over to his house. When I got there, I discovered Alex huddled in a corner of his dimly lit living room, his laptop open in front of him. He was visibly shaken, sweat beads glistened on his forehead. Without saying a word, he turned the screen to face me after motioning for me to sit next to him. I fixed my attention on the picture filling the screen. It was a straightforward illustration of a Siberian husky dog sporting an unnaturally wide and menacing grin. Its eyes were a fiery red, almost like they were on fire, and its teeth were sharp, too sharp for any dog. I shivered uncontrollably. Trying to conceal my unease, I asked, What is this? Alex said in a trembling voice, It's the smile dog, man. I noticed it. I saw the damn thing, and now I can't stop thinking about it. With skepticism, I arched an eyebrow. Alex, it's just a scary picture, man. How's it gonna hurt you? While shaking his head, Alex kept his gaze fixed on the monitor. You don't get it. Just like you're doing right now. I looked at it, but it persisted even after I closed the tab. In my dreams, it stuck with me. I leaned in closer, attempting to understand why he was afraid. What happened in your dreams? With his voice trembling, Alex inhaled deeply. In my dream, that dog and I are both confined to a pitch black space. It's standing there with me, grinning, and its eyes are piercing. It repeatedly urges me to spread the word. I can still hear it whispering in the back of my mind every time I wake up. Even though I was beginning to feel uneasy, I had to control my fear. So what are you asking me to do? Alex gave me a desperate look as he turned to face me. I need your help, man. It needs to be removed. 
Please, I need to spread the word, issue a warning, and get people to stop. Torn between doubt and concern for my friend, I paused. But I couldn't desert Alex in his hour of need, because the fear in his eyes was real. I reluctantly said, Okay, man, we'll share the picture. But after that, you need to see a doctor. In order to alert people to the evil force behind the smile dog image, we posted it on various social media sites. There were a variety of reactions, some of which discounted it as a hoax and others shared their own anxieties and experiences. But the unease that had descended upon us was undeniable. We got a message from an unknown person on social media as the night wore on. A blank profile picture and random letters and numbers made up the username. You've been warned, was all that was written in the message. Alex and I looked at each other anxiously, but we refused to be intimidated by a user who chose to remain anonymous. We persisted in our efforts to inform others in the hopes that by doing so, we would be able to reverse the curse. Days turned into weeks, and the smile dog started to encroach on our lives in ways we never could have anticipated. Its voice echoed ominously in our dreams as we heard its whispers in the darkness of our bedrooms. Every day brought us closer to insanity and greater desperation. I was using the laptop to browse the internet by myself one evening when I got a message. Alex had requested a video call. In anticipation of seeing his anxious face on the screen, I agreed to it. But what I had witnessed chilled my blood. There was Alex, but he had lifeless eyes and a contorted face. Spread the word. He said with a hollow tone in his voice. The call ended abruptly before I had a chance to react and speak to him. I panicked as soon as I realized that something had control over my friend. I frantically called the police and tried to explain the situation as best I could without mentioning the smile dog. When they got to Alex's house, they discovered him frozen with a manic smile in a catatonic state. The authorities were at a loss as to what had happened to him, and I was unable to bring myself to tell them the truth. The smile dog had a negative impact on Alex. It was only a matter of time before it came for me. I can hear it in the shadows, pleading with me to spread the word as I sit by myself in my darkened room. I'm unable to evade its menacing gaze, and I worry that before long, I'll be like Alex, a pawn in the hands of an evil force. I'm telling you this story right now to ask for assistance, not as a warning. If you ever encounter the smile dog, avoid looking into its eyes, using its image, and dreaming about it. Once it has its teeth in your soul, it's impossible to escape. It's been over 20 years now. 20 years of my living hell. Ever since that cursed photo appeared in my life, everyone I meet thinks I've gone crazy over something ridiculous. That the smile.jpg file is nothing more than an internet hoax. How I envy those who are ignorant enough to believe that. This is my last chance to tell the full story. It started in the early 90s. I was working my first job in Chicago at an office that operated a digital bulletin board. The people in the office didn't treat me with any respect. I quickly became bitter and resentful of my co-workers. It was in that headspace that smile.jpg just found me. I was in my tiny cubicle in the darkest corner of the office, working on the oldest computer owned by the company. I received a random message from an address typed out in characters that weren't even a real language. The subject line read, Smile, God loves you. I absentmindedly opened the email. All it contained was a single attachment, smile.jpg. I downloaded it and my life changed forever. That horrible, unnatural, smiling dog and the wretched red hand beside it. As soon as I saw it, I knew something was wrong. This wasn't supposed to be seen by people. And yet, I spent the remaining two hours of my workday locked in a trance, unable to do anything but stare at it. When I went to sleep that night, I had the first of thousands of nightmares. The dog sat on top of me, Repeatedly speaking, spread the word as I was unable to move or say anything. Then, I saw the red hand appear next to me and reach for my face. Right as it grabbed me, I shot awake, hyperventilating in a cold sweat. This nightmare happened every night for the next week. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I knew what it wanted me to do. I found the email from the garbled address and forwarded it to everyone in the office. 
including the people that worked for other companies in the same building. The whole rest of the day was lost to everyone becoming deeply unsettled by the image. Some even had panic attacks. My boss asked me why I did it, but I claimed it was a system error, that as soon as I clicked on it, it just forwarded itself to everyone like a computer virus. He reluctantly believed me. Luckily, after that, the nightmare stopped for a while. For everyone else, however, they had only just begun. Productivity grinded to a halt. Everyone was sleep-deprived, anxious and depressed, complaining of nightmares and visual disturbances related to the smile.jpg file. One by one, they all quit, until eventually the company went under. I lost my job and gained a heavy sense of guilt, which sent me into a deep depression. Unfortunately, it wasn't long after that that my nightmares returned. I kept seeing the same thing. But instead of the smiling dog sitting on me, I was watching it invade the sleep of my old co-workers. The dog glared at them with that awful smile as the devil's hand covered their mouth so they couldn't scream. The dog always turned to look at me, as if to say thank you. Then it turned back to its victim, reaching down and taking a bite out of their throat. And then every night for the next week, I was stuck watching the dog slowly devour one of my old co-workers while the devil held them down. Once the poor soul was completely consumed, the next night would start the whole process over again with another co-worker. I had been used by the demon to spread its curse to hundreds of people, foolishly believing it would spare me. I have no idea how many people I damned, but the number is in the high hundreds. Finally, one day in 2008, it seemed to stop. I had watched my last old colleague get eaten alive in my nightmares. For the first time in many years, I slept without disturbance. Of course, I lived with an unspeakable amount of guilt, but I was free of the curse. Or so I thought. I was only allowed a few months of rest before it came back with a vengeance. Not only did it return to my nightmares, each night inching closer to my throat, but for the first time, I saw the dog while I was awake. Initially, I saw glimpses of it while I was walking out in the street. It stalked me out of the corner of my eye, always smiling, always inching closer, until eventually it found its way into my apartment. One day, I got inside and closed the door, and when I turned around, it was sitting right in front of me, once again commanding me to spread the word, over and over again. I was trapped there for hours, hearing those words a million times, until it finally let me loose from the trance. Even then, I tried to ignore it, but the harder I resisted, the more it terrorized me. When I stood in front of the mirror, I could see the devil's hand resting on my shoulder, and the longer I disobeyed, the tighter its grip became, until one day, my collarbone broke out of nowhere right before my eyes. After getting the bone set, I obeyed in a moment of cowardice. I concocted a fake story about a man whose curiosity about the now infamous Smile Dog photo led him to do an investigation about its origins and posted it to the internet. As I typed this story out on my computer, my hands transformed to look as red and twisted as the devil's hands itself. Ever since then, that's the only way I can see them. I knew the file was already out there, so I had to find a way to increase the interest surrounding it so that more people would inadvertently curse themselves out of their own curiosity. It was far more successful than I thought it would be. The demon left me alone in my waking life, but my nightmares were once again stricken with the horror of watching the souls I was responsible for damning being taken by the dog. Except this time, it was different. Every night, I saw different people of all ages and backgrounds sitting in front of a computer screen with a red glow. Then without warning, the devil's hand reached through the screen and grabbed the person, then ripped their skeleton from their flesh and pulled it through. Then, the dog stepped through the screen, turned to smile at me for a moment, then happily devoured the boneless meal I provided. Every night I went to sleep, I must have watched this happen to a thousand people. The dog's prevalence waxed and waned for the next ten plus years, until recently. It seems that people have stopped to care about it as much. That, 
or everyone who heard about it has already been taken. The demon has returned to me. I now see the dog following me wherever I go, incessantly murmuring, spread the word, non-stop. The devil's hand has an unwavering grip around my throat. They are forcing me to create a new surge of interest around the smile.jpg file so they can go on another evil rampage. And I find myself doing their bidding without even thinking about it, as if my own force of will has completely withered away. However, I cannot keep doing this. I know that I can never escape this curse as long as I'm alive. So this is my final message and admission of guilt to the world.